The world of dog care can be super confusing and I am here to tell you what care has worked for me and my dog Luna and uh, what I suggest you to think about getting when you are hiking with your dog. So let's get started. Hello my hiking friends, it is super nice to see you here. So this is the third and final part of my hiking with dogs series. On the first video I talked about cons of hiking with dogs and the second video was dedicated for uh, how to prepare for your hike with your dog. If you haven't seen them already go check them out, I will put the links below. They will definitely help you to prepare for your hike with your dog. But today's topic, dog gear. My experience of hiking with dogs comes from hiking with my dog Luna. And I have done that about two years now. And uh, I have gathered a lot of gear by that time. The first thing, always please, always take some plastic bags with you to pick up your dog poop and dispose them properly. Don't leave your dog poop on the trail for other people to see. And especially please don't leave dog poop bags on the trail. Yeah, that's an ugly, ugly thing to do. Please don't do that. The second gear you definitely need is a leash. Even when your dog is super good at coming back to you when you are asking your dog, then still please keep your dog on a leash. I touched this subject on my previous uh, videos as well, so please go and watch them. I will not stay here and talk to you about the importance of leash, but I will show you what system I am using. So I have found that the most beneficial for me is uh, the flexi leash. By the way, I will put all of the links of the gears that I am showing you here down below so you can check them out if you want to in more detail. But I use this leash uh, because this allows Luna to go and sniff around and then come back again to me without the leash tangling because on our very first hike I used the long leash and every time the leash like tangled into her feet and tangled into my feet and it was like dragging on the ground and it was really not so comfortable but using the flexi leash I attach this part to my hip belt and then yeah Luna can chill around and the good thing is I can fix the leash for example when I want to hold Luna tight and I don't want uh, to let her uh, go really far I just uh, push the button and it stays put. What goes hand in hand with the leash is the harness system or the collar so I suggest using a thicker like a wider color for your dog to spread the weight of the pulling or of the pressure more evenly but if you have the possibility get a harness because if you are hiking for a very long time harness helps to even out the pressure even more and especially when your dog likes to pull at some point uh, so i use this hurta harness but every dog is different, every dog's rib, rib cage is different. So I tried on, for um, Luna tried on many harnesses before I figured that this is the most comfortable and uh, like suits the best for Luna. Dog shoes. This was a thing that I first thought that my dog never needs, but I was wrong almost at the very beginning of our hiking adventures. Because at one time I realized that when the terrain is uh, super rough and when I force my dog to walk on it on her bare paws, uh, they will get painful after one kilometer, after two kilometers. And actually on that hike, I was so worried about her paws that I took my sleeping socks, cut them in half and taped them around my dog's paws. So she would have at least some kind of padding or protection between those sharp uh, rocks that we had. So keep in mind that dog's paws are a bit more durable than your own bare feet but they are not as durable and hard as your sole of your shoes. I got Luna uh, four dog boots that are like quite hardcore looking and be aware the shape of your dog front paws and back paws are different so that's why I have two different kind of shoes uh, one for her back feet and one for her front feet paws 
but I have to say uh, I haven't used them on my hike because even though I tried those or Luna tried those these boots on uh, on the shop I realized that I don't like the design because the velcro uh, is always coming off here and it doesn't have a really nice attachment system so it all the time came off and these were expensive as well I think I paid like 50 euros for these boots for my future hikes i am planning to get the, some sock looking uh, dog shoes or dog socks from etsy to have this extra protection if we are walking on some kind of harder terrain but if you are hiking with your dog in mountains so definitely get those hardcore boots with this uh, nice grip and more durable because your especially your dog's back paws will have a lot of pressure and a lot of contact with the stones and i have heard from hikers who are hiking in the mountains with their dogs that they really need those back leg boots a quick tip if you are walking in a warm weather and you think that the ground may be hot then a tip for you is place the back of your hand onto the ground and if it is too hot for you to keep your hand there for five seconds then the ground is too hot for your dog as well so switch the trail or put on on some dog socks or dog shoes also be aware that dogs can also have blisters in their boots and dogs sweat through the soles of their feet so when you are taking a break also let your dog take a break from the boots take the boots off air them out because if you are keeping them there for the whole day and the weather is hot you, your dog will get blisters and that's not a pleasant experience I can imagine like having your own blisters is hard enough how how will you treat your dog's blisters so the next gear item is something for warmth so you know your dog best but if your dog has only one layer of coat like your dog doesn't have the under layer uh, or like the soft and warm layer of fur your dog most likely needs something warm to sleep on during the nights and even maybe something warm to have on her or him when you are walking what i use for my uh, luna is uh, she has quite a thick fur and I use a sleeping mat for her to sleep on and sit on when we are on camp. So I cut off four pieces from my Thermarest uh, mat. If your dog is more cold, frightened, do you say that? Like uh, if he or she uh, fears more cold, then you may need a dog sleeping bag. So I have here a rough wear dog sleeping bag it is quite heavy and bulky another company just came out with a more lighter version version of dog uh, sleeping bag you can also use some old a human sleeping bag or even use a kids sleeping bag. The great thing about dog sleeping bags is that they are more likely to be weather resistant or water resistant in the inside. So when your dog is wet or dirty or muddy when he or she crawls into the bag you can just shake the dirt off later on. If you're using a kids sleeping bag then I imagine it will be a bit harder. I have done a review on this bag so I will put the card here check it out if you want to hear more about that I have to say that not having a sleeping bag isn't a deal breaker uh, especially when your dog has thicker fur but please have something for them to sleep on so they have this uh, barrier uh, to keep the cold uh, that is coming off the ground off of them you can imagine how cold it can be if you have to sleep on a bare ground so it's something to keep in mind okay so we talked about warmth now rain imagine when it is raining the whole day your dog is drenched and then you have to step into your tent and do you want to have this wet and shivering dog in your tent no i don't so i have this rain jacket uh, all also, I am really happy with it. It's a hurta jacket. Luna doesn't love it, but she tolerates it. So, okay, now the exciting part, dog backpack. 
they can be quite expensive and I have heard that if you buy a cheaper one they will break really easily. Fortunately I have had this one for as long as I have had Luna. I have used it most of our hikes but not all of them. Uh, but I don't want to promote a product, I just want to tell you that if your dog is uh, strong enough or big enough or just uh, task oriented enough you can put a dog pack back on him or her to help you share the load a bit but you can only put 10 to 30 percent of the body weight of the dog into the backpack so Luna weighs like 15 kilograms this harness and backpack system weighs about 500 grams so I can put around one kilo on her that is not much but at least something when you are starting out with a backpack don't load the bag immediately. Start with an empty bag so your dog can get used to the size because it is quite bulky on the side of the dog. And in fact, Luna didn't understand at first that uh, she had these like things on her back. So she bumped into doors and walls all the time. So that's why you start with an empty bag to get uh, your dog used to it. And then you start adding up the weight slowly. At first I thought they aren't worth the extra fiddling because Luna wants to swim while we are on the trail, on trenches, on puddles. So at first I thought that I have to take the bag off and it was really annoying to do that when I wanted to rest and I instead I had to start taking the bag off and then afterwards putting it back on. So, But a viewer of mine suggested that I should just uh, waterproof the items that I put here. For example, the dog food bags are either way in Ziploc bags, so they are waterproof and then I just let Luna roam free with the bag in the puddles, in the lakes. And Luna doesn't swim with it, so that's a no-go for me. It adds extra weight and it can be dangerous for the dog. But she just wants to dip in and make herself wet. It has like a little holes at the bottom of it, so if the water goes in, it's not waterproof. Uh, it goes in and then it dribbles out from this hole here. On some trips I feel that I, I can't be bothered with a backpack so I just use a harness. But uh, I have used the harness and uh, at some days I have taken the bag off and carried it myself when I have thought that Luna needs a break. But dog backpacks can be quite expensive, so think about it if your dog is really up to carrying it. Otherwise, you don't, don't waste your money out on it. Almost the last item that I carry for Luna on the trail is some kind of uh, eating and water bowl. So at first I had this little nifty bowl and uh, it uh, goes flat like this and it has a little hole in it. So I used to attach it to my backpack and I could just take it off, fill it with water, offer it to Luna and then put it back there. But it was too small for the feeding time and I had to fill the bowl two times uh, when uh, she was eating so I switched the bowl up to a bigger one and also if you are buying some kind of bowl for your dog bear in mind that the wider the bottom of the bowl the better because then it is more stable on the ground and it doesn't like lose its balance uh, which I have had happened with this little one it is a cute one but the bottom of it is quite small. The bowl also has some holes in it so I could attach it to my backpack but I don't because it's too big to just be there. So instead I carry my cup that I either way have with me all the time. I keep this cup at the pockets of my backpack and then when we are on a break and I want to give Luna some water I just take it and pour some water in here and later on when I am making tea with my for myself I just clean it and basically yeah it is clean water anyway that my dog drinks and the last thing that I carry with me when I go hiking with Luna is a dog muscle so I know that this is not the most humane muscle or like dog friendly muscle the the big ones with like the big cage around your dog's mouth that seem really scary are the best because they give the dog's uh, mouth or the nose the most 
freedom, but they are too big for me to carry. So I carry this and I only use it when we are using public transportation to get to the trail and off trail. I often use trains and also buses. So uh, it is on Luna for only a short period of time, not for the whole day. And also it is much lighter and smaller to pack into my bag. Also, if something goes exceptionally wrong, <laughs> and somebody needs to manage with Luna. So at least then I have something with me to protect others and protect me and protect her as well. If you have any other gear or dog hiking gear that has worked for you very well, or you have some kind of other tips and tricks with hiking with dogs, please share them in the comments below. Of course, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to support me in making these videos and also if you want to support my upcoming through hike in New Zealand, so you can go to my Patreon page, pledge there as low as two dollars per month in exchange of some extra perks and you can also check out my etchy shop and buy some art prints or stickers there i will soon uh, be putting up some new new items on sale there so keep an eye on that thank you so much for watching go for a hike yourself because life is so much better in hiking shoes and i will already see you next time bye